Welcome back to the playlist on ethanol metabolism and uses and implications in the body. In this video, we're going to look at the conversion of acetate to acetyl-CoA. Now, if you remember back to the very first video, or one of the first videos in the playlist, whatever it is, we talked about the entire sort of broad sense reaction roadmap for getting rid of ethanol. We saw that there were basically three reactions to get rid of ethanol, and we convert that to acetaldehyde. Then there were several reactions we could use to get rid of the acetaldehyde, but in general, the thing we use to get rid of it, but in general, acetaldehyde got converted to acetate. Acetate, much like acetaldehyde, is toxic. Um, by no means do you want to have lots of acetate build up. And acetate is not something that's very readily excretable. And so, in theory then, if acetate is such a toxin, then you should have a way to get rid of it. And it turns out it's this enzyme right here, acetyl-CoA synthetase. Another name that you could see this enzyme written as, let me write it down right here. This enzyme is also, let me get the right brush, it's also called acetate, then you put this colon here, coenzyme A ligase. So it's a class six enzyme. If you're doing EC nomenclature, this enzyme is needed to get rid of acetate. Now, what would be the important implications of this reaction if you just look at it, the net reaction reactants to products? Well, number one, you could look at it from the perspective of getting rid of acetate, okay? Acetate's a toxin. Um, they've done studies where they infuse rats with, um, at least for a rat, it's a pretty um, a significant concentration of an acetate. Um, and the acetate, it turns out, gives the rats really bad headaches. And you say, well, I get headaches when I drink too much and have a hangover. Well, one of the proposed um, mechanisms by which hangovers occur, I mean, you can certainly invoke the anti-diuretic hormone argument, but also there's acetaldehyde and then there's acetate. Um, because if you drink too much alcohol, you're going to get a, a buildup of acetate. Okay, that's sort of um, just how the reaction progresses because in general they're irreversible. Okay. The other way you can look at this reaction is say, well, if I'm going to get rid of acetate, you know, I'd theoretically like to get something useful out of it. Well, take a look at this molecule over here. This is acetyl-CoA. Well, this molecule is important for many reactions. Um, it's important for acetylating components of the DNA. Um, there's some biosynthetic reactions that use it, but arguably the one everybody recognizes is this feeds into the very first reaction of the TCA cycle. And if you go to the TCA cycle playlist or you know anything about that, that enzyme is citrate synthase. So this is a, a, an important two-carbon donor for the TCA cycle. So that's sort of the benefit of doing it. What's the net reaction? Well, acetate is going to be... Um, it's going to be adenylated. What does that mean? When, we, when you adenylate something, it means you attach an AMP to it. So you're going to use ATP to do that. That's the prototypical adenylate donor. And then that's going to release pyrophosphate here. The pyrophosphate can be metabolized by this enzyme called inorganic pyrophosphatase. When that enzyme, in or, oops, let me get rid of that. When inorganic pyrophosphatase metabolizes it, you end up getting two molecules of inorganic phosphate and the importance or the implications of this particular enzyme is remember that this enzyme, inorganic pyrophosphatase, upon re, uh, complete reaction, it has a delta G far less than zero. We've talked about delta G in the, th the thermodynamic sense in other videos, and recall that delta G is a measure of the amount of energy that's released that has the capacity to do work. Okay. Um, you can, and so if you have a negative delta G, that implies energy is released that has the capacity to do work, and that's what helps keep the cell moving by providing energy, right? Everything's about energy. If it had a positive delta G, that wouldn't be very useful because you'd have to put work, or excuse me, energy to do work into the enzyme. In this case, it releases it. That's pretty useful to us. Well, then the second step of this reaction is we're going to use coenzyme A to ligate um, to the two carbon fragment, and then we're going to lose that adenylate, and we end up with this very important molecule, acetyl CoA. Well, in this video, we're going to look at the mechanism of this enzyme. Okay, 
up here, this is the molecule adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and this molecule over here, this is acetate. We want to get rid of it because it's not readily excretable and it's a toxin, causes headaches, hangover, and we want to get something useful out of it. Let's do that. I'll do the mechanistic steps in green here. This carboxylate oxygen is going to act as a nucleophile and it's going to attack the alpha phosphate of ATP. Remember, if you look at the phosphates over here, the one proximal to the ribose has alpha, and as you get more and more distal, it goes beta and gamma. Acetate is going to do a nucleophilic attack on the central phosphorus atom of the alpha phosphate. That's going to kick these pi electrons up here, and when you look at this intermediate, this is what's termed a pentavalent intermediate. Why is it pentavalent? Because now this phosphorus atom actually has five bonds. Phosphorus is able to do that because it's below the second period. It has some d orbitals available, and so it's able to violate that um, sort of silly octet rule that only applies for four atoms. Okay? Um, so you have this phosphorus atom pentavalent. The other name for this type of intermediate, if you haven't seen it, it's called a trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. Most people, to avoid saying this long phrase, trigonal bipyramidal, you just simply call it a pentavalent intermediate. Now, you've seen something pretty similar to that um, when you did, uh, it, probably in organic chemistry, you looked at um, acyl substitutions, and what you saw were tetrahedral intermediates. So if you saw a tetrahedral intermediate, remember, they collapse back down and form a double bond. Well, a similar thing's going to happen here. You have this um, unstable intermediate, so these electrons, they're pi electrons, they're going to come back down, reform a double bond, and then you should get loss of a leaving group. In this case, the leaving group is this pyrophosphate over here, and so that's going to leave over there. Pyrophosphate's the leaving group. We talked about inorganic pyrophosphatase can metabolize this into two inorganic phosphates, right? Two of those, and when we do that particular reaction, it's a cytosolic reaction. We get a delta G that is significantly less than zero. And that's releasing a significant amount of free energy that has the capacity to do work elsewhere in the cell. Okay? So anyways, um, let's look at what's going to happen here. We have this, essentially this acetyl, or this acetoxy group. This is an acetoxy group. Um, and it's uh, connected to adenylate, AMP. Well, essentially this oxygen right here on the phosphate here, this alpha phosphate, is going to abstract the proton from coenzyme A, and that's going to cause this nucleophilic attack of, the, of this thiol um, right there on the carbonyl of this ester. And that's going to cause the generation of, well, I mentioned actually the, that intermediate before. When we talked about this, I compared it to the tetrahedral intermediate. That's what you see right here, this thing right here. Kind of put it off like this. This is exactly what I was talking about. That's the tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, and what you saw in acyl substitutions, and that's exactly what this is. When you saw acyl substitutions in organic, you knew you know that the intermediate will collapse back down, and it will reform the carbonyl. And so when we reform that carbonyl, we have to have a leaving group. In that in this case, it is adenylate. Okay, and adenylate. Remember also you can refer to it as AMP or adenosine monophosphate. And when we uh, finish that mechanistic step. We also end up with this molecule, which is that really important molecule in both catabolism and biosynthesis called acetyl-CoA. And if you just remember this, that acetyl-CoA, one of its main functions, and arguably the one that everybody knows, is it goes and feeds directly into the TCA cycle. And I mentioned that that enzyme that uses it is called citrate synthesis, or excuse me, citrate synthase, which combines acetyl-CoA, the two carbons right here, and oxaloacetate to make citrate. That's the first step, usually what people consider of the TCA cycle. And what's the benefit, again, of that? I want to emphasize that kind of the beauty in this type of reaction is you get rid of a potentially toxic molecule and you produce something useful from it, okay? Um, when you're looking at um, alcohol dehydrogenase, this is going back a few videos, but ultimately I would say the whole pathway, but especially that enzyme, really what sort of the main purpose of, of that enzyme is, is, I mean, you think about it like this, you're not hopefully constantly consuming alcohol, but if you're not doing that, if you're just eating normal things, there are trace amounts of, of ethanol in certain foods 
And then also remember that as a person, you're actually mostly bacteria. Um, the human cell is, of course, eukaryotic, but actually I think the statistic last I heard is that there's actually 10 times the number of bacterial cells that make you up than eukaryotic cells. So you're actually mostly bacterial cells. And so bacteria, through different foods, they can produce ethanol. Well, the ethanol is perceived as foreign by, and potentially toxic by the human body. So it has this pathway to get rid of it. And ultimately what we can do is create some acetyl-CoA from it. The one problem you could, you could suggest for this is that notice we do have to we do have to waste an ATP. So remember, we use alcohol, or excuse me, ethanol and alcohol dehydrogenase. We get an NADH out of that. Then we use acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, or aldehyde dehydrogenase, get another NADH out of that. But then once we get to acetate, we do have to waste an ATP. And, but that gives us acetyl-CoA, something that can be used for biosynthesis or to go into the TCA cycle. Okay, so hopefully this video and reaction makes a little bit of sense. See you in the next video.